Good evening. What I'm going to talk to you about tonight is an idea that came to me many years ago. It deals with teaching. The concept started for me back when I was an undergraduate at Miami University. I majored in systems analysis, and at Miami University as a systems major, we were required to take Econ 201. So I signed up for Econ 201 in the fall semester, and I went to class, sat in the front seat, studied hard, but I didn't do so well. So what did I do? I dropped it and took it the next semester with a different professor. In that class, I did much better. So as a result of this, it occurred to me that it wasn't that I couldn't learn econ. Maybe it was the case that the first professor didn't teach it in a way that was conducive for me. We hear stories about learning styles, and so maybe that has something to do with it. So then I started to get this idea. I started to look at the way teaching was done, and I looked at the current models of teaching. So if you look at traditional models, beginning with uh, what I call a single learner, multiple student model, that's a classroom model. We move from there, and we move into the single learner, uh, single instructor model, that's tutoring. So I looked at those and I said, well, what if we could change it? Now we have technology. Those are traditional models. What if we could change that model such that you had what we call missile or multiple instructor and single learner model? So in other words, if for every student I had several instructors who all taught the same subject but explained it a different way. Now, physically in the real world, that's not feasible too expensive and it's impossible. However, in the virtual world, it's quite, quite possible and we actually tried this. So let me show you what it looks like. So, my screen is big, let me shrink this a little bit. So here's a, a lesson for those of you who do programming. It's C++, and this is an introduction to arrays in C++. So this will be one method taught by someone. I go through, I look at their lesson, I learn it, I do the example, and eventually I get to a quiz. But let's say I don't do so well. I'm purposely marking these wrong. So I get the answers wrong. Now watch what happens. I'm back on teaching arrays with an introduction, but it changed the way it's going to be taught to me. And in this case, Hello. This is a lesson on arrays and C. I will introduce you to arrays. I will discuss what are arrays. So I have an avatar in this example that's going to teach me the same thing. Now let's assume that for some reason or another, I actually get it this time and I do well. It takes me to lesson two with the same instructor. So let me explain what you just saw. Essentially, I can be taught something one way, I learn it, hopefully, and then I'm evaluated on that. If I do well, I go on to the next lesson and I stay with that instructor or that method. If I don't do well, then I'm forced to repeat that method, the, the lesson, 
but it's explained to me a different way. So when you do this, we've done studies, and what we discovered was something interesting. In a traditional classroom, you've all seen this, the bell curve distribution, where most of the people get it somewhat, and a few people really get it, and a few people absolutely don't get it at all. That's the bell curve, and I'll be able to explain why that happens in, in a second. Under the model of missile, multiple instructor, single learner, we have a skewed distribution where everybody, nearly everybody, gets it exceptionally well, and a few somewhat get it, but no one does not get it. So why did this happen? Well, this is interesting because what we saw is that what fits you doesn't necessarily fit me. You know, one size doesn't fit all in the learning space. And from our research, we made a discovery, which is that in learning styles theory, it's once thought that I can give you this inventory, a learning style inventory, you fill it out, and it says, you're a visual learner. So it was presumed that if I knew you were a visual learner, and I'm teaching you something, I taught it to you in a visual way. But what our research showed us was that that's actually not true. If you look at a course, you have several lessons or topics. And what we discovered was that people's learning style was changing from topic to topic or lesson to lesson. So if you think about what that means, if you have a person, a single instructor, teaching many people, and I'm limited in my ability to change the way I teach to you, that means at certain points in the classroom, some of you will get certain things, some of you will not, and you get it at different times. What happens? That averages out. Hence, you have a bell curve distribution in learning because it's normalized throughout the course because you get certain things at certain times and other times you don't. That's why missile became so effective. So, based on this concept of being able to provide multiple forms of instruction or multiple explanations per lesson, it led to this idea, what if we could tailor certain lessons for specific populations and certain circumstances? So we had this idea of culture. So when you say you're gonna use culture, you have to define it. So what is culture? We define it as who you are, which are things about you that you can't easily change, and what you do, many things you regularly practice. So we took this information and we asked the question, said if we define culture in this way, we could take lessons and tailor it to specific populations or groups, and then throw it into this portal under the missile model. And if we did that, what would that look like and what would happen? We know what the learning distribution would be. We know we get a skewed learning distribution. But the question is, what would that look like? So we did an experiment with a group of kids in Chicago who were African-American kids. Oh, those are my kids. <laughs> and we talked to these kids and the kids told us that I can't do math. My mom couldn't do it, my grandmother couldn't do it, therefore I can't do it. And they said, well, what do you like to do? We noticed these kids were consuming hip hop music and video games. So we created what we call City Stroll. Let me introduce you to this cat Malik Who's currently on the way to go grab some sweets He had to get some Snickers Cause his sweet tooth triggered So Kitty's candy stand is where he needed to hit up And pick up about six of them Snickers He grabbed six Snicker bars real quick And had 15 penny candies that he wanted to get The total was $3.15 But Malik said, dang, that don't make no sense 
Cause it should be more than that little expense The 50 penny candies cost one cent each But how much did the price of the Snickers reach? Take the penny candies out, that's 15 cents You get three dollars And then you divide three dollars by the six Snicker bars And 50 cents is a Snickers individual cost Malik then thought that his math had failed But turned to find a sign that said Snickers on sale So, let me show you one more We'll do another one, the ice cream stand. Algebra. Malik met up with his friend Lawana. They both craved for ice cream and knew it was a problem. They stepped into the ice cream shop without having a clue which flavor to rock. So Malik put all 10 flavors to the test, but Lawana still had four. She didn't taste yet, but time was short and they had to bounce. And both left with no preferred flavor found. The Lawana just had to confess that she didn't get to taste all the flavors in the set. Malik said, well, how many did you get to test? Lawana replied, saying that she had four left. Well, Malik knew if there was ten flavors, then he'd subtract the four, and then he'd end with six flavors that she had already had. He said, you tried most of them, so you can't be sad. Algebra. So, now you take a quiz. And if you notice the question here, it's kind of hard to read, but the question is identical to that which was uh, in, in the video. The next question is the same type of question, but the numbers change. And if I continue, what we do is we are changing the question. So the first question is identical to what you just seen. The next question is the same type of question, but I change the numbers. The following question will be a different variable you solve for, and we change that. So what that will empower us to do is actually see if this method of instruction is having an impact, and if it doesn't, at what stage does it fail? So we took this and tested with these kids. We let them play with these lessons. The kids who said, I can't do math, I don't like math, uh, I just, hereditary, I couldn't do it. And what we discovered was that the kids had high overall enjoyment. It was interesting because parents were telling us that the kids were coming home singing rap lyrics with numbers in them. <laughs> and so they stuck in their heads. So some of you may remember this. Many years ago, on Saturday afternoons, there used to be something on television, a commercial called Schoolhouse Rock. How many of you remember that? So Schoolhouse Rock, a bill on Capitol Hill. How many of you have seen that recently? This is similar to the bill on Capitol Hill what I discovered was that I hadn't seen that in over 20 something years. And many of my fellow friends hadn't seen it, but we all remember that. It's had an impression. Could it be that these lyrics in algebra could have a similar impression? This held their attention. Kids said if math was taught this way, I like it. Again, these are people who did not like math. In particular, we had a group of young women who were using it and said, I can't do math, but if this was the way it was taught, I think I like it. They found it extremely interesting. They were engaged. These kids were looking at these, these videos and spending time on them, and they were thinking, I just started, but you've been doing it for 15 minutes. So again, you see the quote here from one of our, our subjects, where they really enjoyed this idea of having what we call a culturally relevant approach to teaching them math. Integrating who they are and what they do into the curriculum, along with the idea of a missile model, multiple instructor, single learner model. We believe this approach can revolutionize teaching. Imagine, if hip hop's not your thing, I could put country music in there. 
Imagine if I had a portal where people could contribute lessons. Kids could contribute lessons, create their own lessons of ways of teaching things. And a teacher could go log onto this portal and say, tonight, the class go home and do lessons three, four, five. And a kid in South Carolina could be taking a lesson from a kid in India, Nashville, Atlanta, anywhere. In such a way that you create a socialized way of learning that has culturally aware modules and others. So with that, I want to say thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoyed it.